Spacecraft flight dynamics is the science of space vehicle performance, stability, and control. It requires analysis of the six degrees of freedom of the vehicle's flight, which are similar to those of aircraft, translation in three-dimensional axes, and its orientation about the vehicle's center of mass in these axes, known as pitch, roll and yaw, with respect to a defined frame of reference. Dynamics is the modeling of the changing position and orientation of a vehicle, in response to external forces acting on the body. For a spacecraft, these forces are of three types, propulsive force usually provided by the vehicle's engine thrust, gravitational force exerted by the Earth or other celestial bodies, and aerodynamic lift and drag when flying in the atmosphere of the Earth or other body, such as Mars or Venus. The vehicle's attitude must be taken into account because of its effect on the aerodynamic and propulsive forces. There are other reasons, unrelated to flight dynamics, for controlling the vehicle's attitude in non-powered flight e.g., thermal control, solar power generation, communications, or astronomical observation. The principles of flight dynamics are normally used to control a spacecraft by means of an inertial navigation system in conjunction with an attitude control system. Together, they create a subsystem of the spacecraft bus often called ADCS. Topic. Basic principles A spacecraft's flight is determined by application of Newton's second law of motion F, F equals M A Display style Math BF F equals M Math BF A where F is the vector sum of all forces exerted on the vehicle, M is its current mass, and A is the acceleration vector, the instantaneous rate of change of velocity v, which in turn is the instantaneous rate of change of displacement. Solving for A, acceleration equals the force sum divided by mass. Acceleration is integrated over time to get velocity, and velocity is in turn integrated to get position. For powered atmospheric flight, the three main forces which act on a vehicle are propulsive force, aerodynamic force, and gravitation. Other external forces such as centrifugal force and Coriolis force, are generally insignificant due to the relatively short time of powered flight, and may generally neglected in simplified performance calculations. Topic. Propulsion. Topic. Atmospheric force Aerodynamic forces, present near a body with significant atmosphere such as Earth, Mars or Venus, are analyzed as, lift, defined as the force component perpendicular to the direction of flight, not necessarily upward to balance gravity, as for an airplane, and drag, the component parallel to, and in the opposite direction of flight. Lift and drag are modeled as the products of a coefficient times dynamic pressure acting on a reference area. L, L equals C L Q A ref. Display style math BF L equals C underscore L Q A underscore text ref. D equals C D Q A ref display style math bf d equals c underscore d q a underscore text ref where cl is roughly linear with alpha the angle of attack between the vehicle axis and the direction of flight up to a limiting value and is zero at alpha equals zero for an axisymmetric body cd varies with alpha two cl and cd vary with reynolds number and mach number Q, the dynamic pressure, is equal to one half rho v2, where rho is atmospheric density, modeled for Earth as a function of altitude in the International Standard Atmosphere using an assumed temperature distribution, hydrostatic pressure variation, and the ideal gas law, and AREF is a characteristic area of the vehicle, such as cross-sectional area at the maximum diameter. Topic. Gravitation. Topic. Powered flight 
Flight calculations are made quite precisely for space missions, taking into account such factors as the Earth's oblateness and non-uniform mass distribution, gravitational forces of all nearby bodies, including the Moon, Sun, and other planets, and three-dimensional flight path. For preliminary performance analysis, some simplifying assumptions can be made – the planet is spherical and uniform, the vehicle can be simulated as a point mass, flight path assumes a two-body patched conic approximation, and the local flight path lies in a single plane with reasonably small loss of accuracy. The general case of a launch from Earth must take engine thrust, aerodynamic forces, and gravity into account. The acceleration equation can be reduced from vector to scalar form by resolving it into its tangential speed v display style v an angular flight path angle theta display style theta relative to local vertical time rate of change components relative to the launch pad the two equations thus become v equals f cos alpha m minus M minus G cos theta display style dot v equals frac f cos alpha m frac d m g cos theta theta equals f sin alpha m v plus l m v plus G V minus V R sin theta Display style dot theta equals frac F sin alpha M V plus frac L M V plus left frac G V frac V R right sin theta where F is the engine thrust alpha is the angle of attack M is the vehicle's mass. D is the vehicle's aerodynamic drag. L is its aerodynamic lift. R is the radial distance to the planet's center, and G is the gravitational acceleration, which varies with the inverse square of the radial distance. G equals G zero R zero R. Two display style g equals g underscore zero left frac r underscore zero r right carrot two mass decreases as propellant is consumed and rocket stages engines or tanks are shed if applicable numerical integration of the two rate equations from time zero when both v and theta are zero gives planet fixed values of v and theta at any time in the flight v equals t Zero T V D T Display style V equals in underscore T underscore zero carrot T dot V D T Theta equals T zero T Theta D T Display style theta equals in underscore t underscore zero carrot t dot theta dt. Finite element analysis can be used to integrate the equations by breaking the flight into small time increments. For most launch vehicles, relatively small levels of lift are generated, and a gravity turn is employed, depending mostly on the third term of the angle rate equation. At the moment of liftoff, when angle and velocity are both zero, the theta dot equation is mathematically indeterminate and cannot be evaluated until velocity becomes non-zero shortly after liftoff. But notice at this condition, the only force which can cause the vehicle to pitch over is the engine thrust acting at a non-zero angle of attack first term and perhaps a slight amount of lift second term, until a non-zero pitch angle is attained. In the gravity turn, pitchover is initiated by applying an increasing angle of attack by means of gimbaled engine thrust, followed by a gradual decrease in angle of attack through the remainder of the flight. Once velocity and flight path angle are known, altitude h and downrange distance s 
are computed as H equals T zero T V cos theta D T Display style H equals in underscore T underscore zero carrot T V cos theta D T R equals R zero plus H Display style R equals R underscore zero plus H S equals R zero T zero T V R sin theta D T display style s equals r underscore zero in underscore t underscore zero carrot t frac v r sin theta d t. The planet fixed values of v and theta are converted to space fixed inertial values with the following conversions. V s equals v two plus two omega r V cos phi sin theta sin a z plus omega r cos theta two Display style v underscore s equals sqrt v caret two plus two omega r v cos varphi sin theta sin underscore z plus omega r cos theta caret two, where omega is the planet's rotational rate in radians per second, phi is the launch site latitude, and Arizona is the launch azimuth angle. Theta s equals r cos v cos theta v s display style theta underscore s equals r cos left frac v cos theta v underscore s right final v s theta s and r must match the requirements of the target orbit as determined by orbital mechanics see orbital flight below where final v s is usually the required periapsis or circular velocity and final theta s is 90 degrees a powered descent analysis would use the same procedure, with reverse boundary conditions. <laughs> Attitude control Attitude control involves gaining and maintaining control over the orientation of an object with respect to an inertial frame of reference or another entity the celestial sphere, certain fields, nearby objects, etc. The attitude of an object can be described using three axes of rotation, generally referred to as roll, pitch, and yaw angles respectively with the roll axis in line with the primary engines. Orientation can be determined by calibration using an external guidance system, such as determining the angles to a reference star or the sun, then internally monitored using an inertial system of mechanical or optical gyroscopes. Orientation is a vector quantity described by three angles for the instantaneous direction, and the instantaneous rates of roll in all three axes of rotation. The aspect of control implies both awareness of the instantaneous orientation and rates of roll and the ability to change the roll rates to assume a new orientation using either a reaction control system or other means. Newton's second law, applied to rotational rather than linear motion, becomes tau equals I X alpha display style math BF tau equals I underscore X math BF alpha where tau is the net torque or moment exerted on the vehicle X is its moment of inertia about the axis of rotation and alpha is the angular acceleration vector in radians per second per second therefore the rotational rate in degrees per second per second is alpha equals 180 pi t i x display style math bf alpha equals 180 pi math bf t i underscore x 
and the angular rotation rate omega degrees per second is obtained by integrating alpha over time and the angular rotation theta is the time integral of the rate analogous to linear motion the three principal moments of inertia x i y and is about the roll pitch and yaw axes are determined through the spacecraft's center of mass Attitude control torque, absent aerodynamic forces, is frequently applied by a reaction control system, a set of thrusters located about the vehicle. The thrusters are fired, either manually or under automatic guidance control, in short bursts to achieve the desired rate of rotation, and then fired in the opposite direction to halt rotation at the desired position. The torque about a specific axis is tau equals I equals 1 n r i times f i display style math bf tau equals sum underscore i equals 1 caret n r underscore i times math bf f underscore i where r is its distance from the center of mass and f is the thrust of an individual thruster only the component of f perpendicular to r is included for situations where propellant consumption may be a problem such as long-duration satellites or space stations, alternative means may be used to provide the control torque, such as reaction wheels or control moment gyroscopes. <laughs> <laughs> Orbital flight Orbital mechanics are used to calculate flight in orbit about a central body. For sufficiently high orbits, generally at least 190 kilometers, 100 nautical miles, in the case of Earth, aerodynamic force may be assumed to be negligible for relatively short-term missions, though a small amount of drag may be present which results in decay of orbital energy over longer periods of time when the central body's mass is much larger than the spacecraft and other bodies are sufficiently far away. The solution of orbital trajectories can be treated as a two-body problem. This can be shown to result in the trajectory being ideally a conic section circle, ellipse, parabola or hyperbola with the central body located at one focus. Orbital trajectories are either circles or ellipses. The parabolic trajectory represents first escape of the vehicle from the central body's gravitational field. Hyperbolic trajectories are escape trajectories with excess velocity, and will be covered under interplanetary flight below. Elliptical orbits are characterized by three elements. The semi-major axis A is the average of the radius at apopsis and periapsis. A equals R A plus R P two. Display style A equals frac R underscore A plus R underscore P two. The eccentricity E can then be calculated for an ellipse, knowing the apses E equals R A A minus one Display style E equals frac R underscore A A minus one. The time period for a complete orbit is dependent only on the semi major axis, and is independent of eccentricity T P equals two Pi Three mu display style tp equals two pi sqrt frac a carrot three mu where mu display style mu is the standard gravitational parameter of the central body. The orientation of the orbit in space is specified by three angles. The inclination i of the orbital plane with the fundamental plane. This is usually a planet or moon's equatorial plane, or in the case of a solar orbit, the Earth's orbital plane around the sun, known as the ecliptic. Positive inclination is northward, while negative inclination is southward. The longitude of the ascending node omega, measured in the fundamental plane counter-clockwise looking southward from a reference direction, usually the vernal equinox, to the line where the spacecraft crosses this plane from south to north. If inclination is zero, this angle is undefined and taken as zero. The argument of periapsis omega, measured in the orbital plane counter clockwise looking southward, from the ascending node to the periapsis. If the inclination is zero, there is no ascending node, so omega is measured from the reference direction. 
For a circular orbit, there is no periapsis, so omega is taken as zero. The orbital plane is ideally constant, but is usually subject to small perturbations caused by planetary oblateness and the presence of other bodies. The spacecraft's position in orbit is specified by the true anomaly nu. Display style nu. An angle measured from the periapsis, or for a circular orbit, from the ascending node or reference direction. The semi lattice rectum, or radius at 90 degrees from periapsis, is P equals a 1 minus E 2. Display style P equals a 1 E carrot 2. The radius at any position in flight is a equals p 1 plus e cos nu display style r equals frac p 1 plus e cos nu and the velocity at that position is v equals mu 2 r minus 1 Display style v equals sqrt mu left frac two r frac one a right. Topic: Types of orbit. Topic: Circular. For a circular orbit, ra. Topic. RP A and eccentricity is zero. Circular velocity at a given radius is V C equals mu R. Display style V underscore C equals sqrt frac mu R. Topic elliptical. For an elliptical orbit, E is greater than zero but less than one. The periapsis velocity is V P equals mu one plus E A one minus E Display style v underscore P equals SQRT frac mu one plus E a one E and the apopsis velocity is v a equals mu 1 minus e a 1 plus e display style v underscore a equals sqrt frac mu 1 e a 1 plus e the limiting condition is a parabolic escape orbit, when E equals 1 and Ra becomes infinite. Escape velocity at periapsis is then V E equals 2 mu R P display style V underscore E equals SQRT frac 2 mu R underscore P Topic. Flight path angle The specific angular momentum of any conic orbit, h, is constant, and is equal to the product of radius and velocity at periapsis. At any other point in the orbit, it is equal to h equals r v cos phi display style h equals r v cos phi where phi is the flight path angle measured from the local horizontal perpendicular to r. This allows the calculation of phi at any point in the orbit, knowing radius and velocity. Phi equals r cos r p v p r v Display style varphi equals r cos left frac r underscore p v underscore p r v right. Note that flight path angle is a constant zero degrees, ninety degrees from local vertical for a circular orbit. Topic: 
Topic: True anomaly as a function of time. It can be shown that the angular momentum equation given above also relates the rate of change in true anomaly to r, v, and phi. Thus, the true anomaly can be found as a function of time since periapsis passage by integration. New equals r p v p t p t one r two d t display style new equals r underscore p v underscore p int underscore t underscore p caret t frac one r caret two d t Conversely, the time required to reach a given anomaly is t equals one r p v p zero new r two d new Display style t equals frac one r underscore p v underscore p in underscore zero carrot new r carrot two d new. Topic: Orbital maneuvers. Once in orbit, a spacecraft may fire rocket engines to make in-plane changes to a different altitude or type of orbit, or to change its orbital plane. These maneuvers require changes in the craft's velocity, and the classical rocket equation is used to calculate the propellant requirements for a given delta v. A delta v budget will add up all the propellant requirements, or determine the total delta v available from a given amount of propellant, for the mission. In-plane changes Topic. Change of plane Plane change maneuvers can be performed alone or in conjunction with other orbit adjustments. For a pure rotation plane change maneuver, consisting only of a change in the inclination of the orbit, the specific angular momentum, h, of the initial and final orbits are equal in magnitude but not in direction. Therefore the change in specific angular momentum can be written as delta h equals 2 h sin delta i 2 display style delta h equals 2 h sin left frac delta i 2 right where h is the specific angular momentum before the plane change and delta i is the desired change in the inclination angle from this it can be shown that the required delta v is delta v equals 2 h sin delta i 2 r display style delta v equals frac 2 h sin frac delta i 2 r from the definition of h this can also be written as delta v equals 2 v cos phi sin delta i 2 display style delta v equals 2 v cos var phi sin left frac left delta i right 2 right where v is the magnitude of velocity before plane change and phi is the flight path angle using the small angle approximation this becomes delta v equals v cos phi delta i display style delta v equals v cos var phi left delta i right the total delta v for a combined maneuver can be calculated by a vector addition of the pure rotation delta v and the delta v for the other planned orbital change topic translunar flight 
Vehicles sent on lunar or planetary missions are generally not launched by direct injection to departure trajectory, but first put into a low Earth parking orbit. This allows the flexibility of a bigger launch window and more time for checking that the vehicle is in proper condition for the flight. A popular misconception is that escape velocity is required for flight to the Moon, it is not. Rather, the vehicle's apogee is raised high enough to take it to a point before it reaches apogee where it enters the Moon's gravitational sphere of influence though the required velocity is close to that of escape. This is defined as the distance from a satellite at which its gravitational pull on a spacecraft equals that of its central body, which is R SOI equals D M S M C two five display style r underscore text soi equals d left frac m underscore s m underscore c right carrot two fifths, where d is the mean distance from the satellite to the central body, and m c and ms are the masses of the central body and satellite, respectively. This value is approximately 66,300 kilometers, 35,800 nautical miles from Earth's moon. A significant portion of the vehicle's flight other than immediate proximity to the Earth or moon requires accurate solution as a three-body problem, but may be preliminarily modeled as a patched conic approximation. Topic: <laughs> Translunar injection. This must be timed so that the Moon will be in position to capture the vehicle, and might be modeled to a first approximation as a home and transfer. However, the rocket burn duration is usually long enough, and occurs during a sufficient change in flight path angle, that this is not very accurate, requiring instead integration of a simplified version of the velocity and angle rate equations given above in powered flight V equals F cos alpha M minus G cos theta display style dot V equals frac F cos alpha M G cos theta theta equals F sin alpha M V plus G V minus V R sin theta display style dot theta equals frac f sin alpha m v plus left frac g v frac v r right sin theta. Topic: Mid course corrections. A simple lunar trajectory stays in one plane, resulting in lunar flyby or orbit within a small range of inclination to the Moon's equator. This also permits a free return, in which the spacecraft would return to the appropriate position for re entry into the Earth's atmosphere if it were not injected into lunar orbit. Relatively small velocity changes are usually required to correct for trajectory errors. Such a trajectory was used for the Apollo 8, Apollo 10, Apollo 11, and Apollo 12 manned lunar missions. Greater flexibility in lunar orbital or landing site coverage at greater angles of lunar inclination can be obtained by performing a plane change maneuver mid-flight. However, this takes away the free return option, as the new plane would take the spacecraft's emergency return trajectory away from the Earth's atmospheric re-entry point and leave the spacecraft in a high Earth orbit. This type of trajectory was used for the last five Apollo missions, 13 through 17. Topic: <laughs> Lunar orbit insertion. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Interplanetary flight. In order to completely leave one planet's gravitational field to reach another, a hyperbolic trajectory relative to the departure planet is necessary, with excess velocity added to or subtracted from the departure planet's orbital velocity around the Sun. The desired heliocentric transfer orbit to a superior planet will have its perihelion at the departure planet, requiring the hyperbolic excess velocity to be applied in the posegrade direction, when the spacecraft is away from the Sun. 
To an inferior planet destination, aphelion will be at the departure planet, and the excess velocity is applied in the retrograde direction when the spacecraft is toward the Sun. For accurate mission calculations, the orbital elements of the planets must be obtained from an ephemeris, such as that published by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. <laughs> Simplifying assumptions For the purpose of preliminary mission analysis and feasibility studies, certain simplified assumptions may be made to enable delta-v calculation with very small error. All the planet's orbits except Mercury have very small eccentricity, and therefore may be assumed to be circular at a constant orbital speed and mean distance from the Sun. All the planet's orbits except Mercury are nearly coplanar, with very small inclination to the ecliptic 3.39 degrees or less, Mercury's inclination is 7.00 degrees. The perturbating effects of the other planet's gravity is negligible. The spacecraft will spend most of its flight time under only the gravitational influence of the Sun, except for brief periods when it is in the sphere of influence of the departure and destination planets, since interplanetary spacecraft spend a large period of time in heliocentric orbit between the planets, which are at relatively large distances away from each other. The patched conic approximation is much more accurate for interplanetary trajectories than for translunar trajectories. The patch point between the hyperbolic trajectory relative to the departure planet and the heliocentric transfer orbit occurs at the planet's sphere of influence radius relative to the Sun, as defined above in orbital flight. Given the Sun's mass ratio of 333,432 times that of Earth and distance of 149,500,000 km 80, nautical miles, the Earth's sphere of influence radius is 924,000 km 499,000 nautical miles roughly 1 million km. <laughs> Heliocentric transfer orbit The transfer orbit required to carry the spacecraft from the departure planet's orbit to the destination planet is chosen among several options. A Hohmann transfer orbit requires the least possible propellant and delta v. This is half of an elliptical orbit with aphelion and perihelion tangential to both planets' orbits, with the longest outbound flight time equal to half the period of the ellipse. This is known as a conjunction class mission. There is no free return option, because if the spacecraft does not enter orbit around the destination planet and instead completes the transfer orbit, the departure planet will not be in its original position. Using another Hohmann transfer to return requires a significant loiter time at the destination planet, resulting in a very long total round-trip mission time. Science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke wrote in his 1951 book The Exploration of Space that an Earth to Mars round trip would require 259 days outbound and another 259 days inbound, with a 425 day stay at Mars. Increasing the departure apsis speed and thus the semi major axis results in a trajectory which crosses the destination planet's orbit non tangentially before reaching the opposite apsis, increasing delta v but cutting the outbound transit time below the maximum. A gravity assist maneuver, sometimes known as a slingshot maneuver or Crocco mission after its 1956 proposer Gaetano Crocco, results in an opposition class mission with a much shorter dwell time at the destination. This is accomplished by swinging past another planet, using its gravity to alter the orbit. A round trip to Mars, for example, can be significantly shortened from the 943 days required for the conjunction mission, to under a year, by swinging past Venus on return to the Earth. <laughs> Hyperbolic departure The required hyperbolic excess velocity v infinity, sometimes called characteristic velocity, is the difference between the transfer orbit's departure speed and the departure planet's heliocentric orbital speed. Once this is determined, the injection velocity relative to the departure planet at periapsis is v p equals two mu r p plus V infinity two 
Display style v underscore p equals sqrt frac two mu r underscore p plus v underscore inf t caret two. The excess velocity vector for a hyperbola is displaced from the periapsis tangent by a characteristic angle. Therefore, the periapsis injection burn must leave the planetary departure point by the same angle. Delta equals arc sine one e. Display style delta equals arc sine frac one e. The geometric equation for eccentricity of an ellipse cannot be used for a hyperbola. But the eccentricity can be calculated from dynamics formulations as E equals one plus two Epsilon H two mu two Display style E equals SQRT one plus frac two var epsilon H carrot two mu carrot two where h is the specific angular momentum as given above in the orbital flight section, calculated at the periapsis, h equals r p v p. Display style h equals r underscore p v underscore p. And epsilon is the specific energy. Epsilon equals v two. Two minus mu r display style var epsilon equals frac v caret two two frac mu r. Also, the equations for r and v given in orbital flight depend on the semi-major axis, and thus are unusable for an escape trajectory. But setting radius at periapsis equal to the r equation at zero anomaly gives an alternate expression for the semi-lattice rectum. P equals R P one plus E display style P equals R underscore P one plus E, which gives a more general equation for radius versus anomaly, which is usable at any eccentricity. R equals R P one plus E one plus E cos new display style R equals frac R underscore P one plus E one plus E cos new. Substituting the alternate expression for P also gives an alternate expression for a which is defined for a hyperbola, but no longer represents the semi-major axis. This gives an equation for velocity versus radius which is likewise usable at any eccentricity. V equals mu 2 r minus 1 minus e 2 r p 1 plus e Display style v equals sqrt mu left frac two r frac one e caret two r underscore p one plus e right. The equations for flight path angle and anomaly versus time given in orbital flight are also usable for hyperbolic trajectories. Topic: Launch windows. There is a great deal of variation with time of the velocity change required for a mission, because of the constantly varying relative positions of the planets. Therefore, optimum launch windows are often chosen from the results of porkchop plots that show contours of characteristic energy v infinity two plotted versus departure and arrival time. Topic: <laughs> Atmospheric entry. Atmospheric entry is the movement of human-made or natural objects as they enter the atmosphere of a celestial body from outer space—in the case of Earth from an altitude above the Kármán line, 100 km. 
This topic is heavily concerned with the process of controlled re-entry of vehicles which are intended to reach the planetary surface intact, but the topic also includes uncontrolled or minimally controlled cases, such as the intentionally or circumstantially occurring, destructive deorbiting of satellites and the falling back to the planet of space junk due to orbital decay. Topic. See also Orbital mechanics <laughs>